everybody's not the same. Everybody's different. If everybody was the same, this world would be so boring. It is amazing. We were fortunate enough to meet David Cortez six years ago. I went very fast. And we said down, said, hug. I won fast. When he introduced himself as only he can, showing us that though he was born without arms, it wasn't going to stop him from playing the game he loves. I'm not scared of nothing. The next year, David took us through his seamless transition to tackle football. Again, the term limitation, non-existent for the kid who could recover fumbles. There you go, David! Let's say that when you're 12 years old, let's say when you're 12 or 13, what well, are you going to be wanting playing football then? Yes. David Cortez is 12 now. David, it's great to see you, man. Good to see you as well. How you been? Good. And as the voice has grown deeper and the body matured, the ways in which David uses his feet have developed as well. Take a bath, do my homework, do school stuff. Um, do, I play my games. I cook my macaroni and my popcorn. You cook macaroni? But like a tiny bowl, <laughs> one of those tiny bowls. But so much more has changed regarding the little boy we met. Like how at least one person reacted to his playing football. While covering one of David's games this season, we encountered it from the DJ working the scheduled games that afternoon. As soon as David got on the field, he said, watch out, there's a kid with no arms, he's gonna get smashed. All my parents were furious, I was furious, but my focus was on David. When he said that, that did um, knock me off balance a little. Like as soon as he said that, I kind of like was shocked why he said that. As soon as he said that, they hit David really hard. Oh my God, that's my baby. I felt like David was a target. Um. They, um, I, I couldn't go up to him and tell him off because I have to be better, better, a better person than he is. All I could do is just report him. Vanessa Amasquita doesn't know if any action came. In the end, it doesn't matter nearly as much as her son's well-being. While those comments mark the first time either she or David had encountered a negative response on the field, it's far from the only time they've been treated differently. You're good. Don't worry about it. If you're staring at my son. I don't like that. It gets me, it really gets under my skin. I would appreciate if people come up to me and ask questions so I could educate you about my son. That would be amazing because we welcome that. We do not welcome you staring at him while we're, he were eating at a restaurant or while we're walking in the mall or shopping somewhere. It's a reality David and Vanessa live with. And truth be told, one of the reasons David continues to play football. This is his heart. His heart is to play football right now. Do you get a lot of surprise reactions? Yeah, because they don't know how I play football. Because they never seen me play before. Except for my friends. What do you tell them when they ask, how do you play football? Yo, know, I, I just um, I just tackle, tackle hard. And do sometimes they ask, how do you tackle? My shoulder, not my head, sometimes my head actually. And that's another reality David faces that nearly no other football player does. As rough and violent as a sport is by nature, every tackle, every block carries the potential to prove that much rougher and that much more violent for David. Even still. He has no fear. Uh, when we ask for people, to get in a front line, we want a line, he's one of the first ones up there, no hesitation. All the kids are, no, I don't want to play uh, on the line, I want to be a linebacker, or I want to be at a corner, or, or they want that position. David doesn't care, he's uh, I'll do it. Whatever it is, he'll go out and do it. When you look at him and you see him out there playing with no arms, and maybe you're tired, and maybe you're like, okay, water break time, or no, I don't want to do this drill anymore, 
and you look at him, does part of you go, you know what, if he can be out here, then I can get through this drill or I can go a little bit longer? All the time, because I do get tired, but I see him over there doing everything he can, so I know that I got to give as much as he does. Knowing that he likes to play football and like showing anybody can play football even though you have no arms. Other people you meet are amazed by you. Do you ever think to yourself, yeah, what I'm doing is pretty amazing? Sometimes I don't think it's amazing because I bet other peop people like me can do it. Like on a YouTube video, I saw a man like me, he shot a bow and got first place medal. He got a bullseye. And I was like, that's pretty cool because I can't shoot a bow. No matter how hard I try, I can't. Sounds like David's met his match, but among his friends, his family, those who know him well, there is no one else like David Cortez, a 12-year-old boy who refuses to be limited physically and in the process expands our perspectives. I do get emo emotional sometimes too, seeing him out there and like, wow, this kid has no arms, but yet again, he's doing a lot of stuff that we take for, for granted. He's a role model for the older kids. He's a role model for me, you know, at your toughest, like you, you go through something crazy in life, you look at David like, this dude's doing it with no arms, you know. I, suck it up, buttercup, and let's go, you know. I'm very proud of him. <laughs> That's, I'm his number one fan. He knows I'm always going to be his number one fan.